I was a fat kid. Um, I'm not going to show bars, but uh, I would have eaten that as well. Uh, what what I'm going to eat. Uh, vlog. Uh, I am opening up here because in about half an hour's time we are traveling to Cork. I am speaking at an event tonight called Cork Lift Fest. It is organized by uh, Dennis Cronin, my friend, the fellow who interviewed me on this, well it was on his channel but I showed him on this channel a few weeks ago. So he organized this um, kind of seminar, this health and fitness seminar with over like 10 speakers. Uh, I am one of them, I am speaking with Gary McGowan or Skinny Gaz and Luke O'Mahony or I am Lom is his um, Instagram name I'm pretty sure. But uh, we are kind of the health and fitness one. Uh, my presentation is pretty much on all on cooking because I'm not going to touch on nutrition or training because the two other boys are much more advanced in that field. Whereas my niche and my expertise lies in the frying pan. So cannot wait to get down there and just kind of start soaking up the energy and the atmosphere uh, to get on stage and talk. And then we'll just take it from there. We'll just enjoy it. We'll do what we do best and kind of just ramble on. Um, you're blessed with the gift of the gab, you can talk to anyone at any time about anything. So, I will try and get some clips, I'll bring on my tripod, hopefully set it up, get some of my talk and some of the other talks. It's all the cheating from Country Munch, and no one's going to be talking all about food for us. Thank you. Before I start, I will commend Dennis for what he has created here tonight, because I actually met Dennis the day he had this idea, it was in UL, like he, I think he left the gym. Like he, I met him on the street, he came up to me like a, like a child in a, in a candy shop. He goes, I, I have an idea. I goes, go on, he goes, why don't we just do a big seminar? We get everyone who knows what health and fitness, we talk, we try and help some people. And I was like, yeah, that's what this go for. And he said, will you speak? And of course. And I said, will you speak? Will you speak? Will you speak? And for weeks he was asking, and I mean, he has exceeded expectation here tonight. I mean, it has been fantastic to get such a broad range of, you know, between health, mental health, I do a bit on food, but uh, I mean, just to start my segment, I'm sure he'll do a soppy little speech at the end, but it's nice to hear from someone else to give him a round of applause. So. so uh, I won't give us too long because it's, it is uh, evening tonight, but my name is Owen Sheehan. I don't have a Cork accent, I'm from Limerick. Uh, I'm 21 years old, I'm a fourth year student, I'm a farmer, and uh, I'm the owner of Country Munch. So Country Munch is a meal delivery service. We deliver homemade, wholesome, home-cooked food straight to the customer's doorstep. Um, it started from the farm. Everything I've eaten since I've been growing up came from you know, our farm, our local producers, or just that kind of, that farm environment. You know, where we're from, it's a small village, and uh, that's kind of what I grew up with, and that's you know what what worked so well for me, or what I think we lost in in Ireland and in the fitness industry. We saw this flux of fad diets of, and I've been through them all. I think that's why I can speak so well on it because I've done every single one of them. I've done low carb, you know, low fat, paleo, keto, you name it. I've done it. It hasn't worked. So it's kind of just going back to what does work, you know, a good broad. Uh, balanced diet with your sweet treats, with your you know, the stuff that you like. So um, that's kind of where Country Munch stemmed from, we're Limerick based. Uh, we're only new, we just started last year, we're technically about six weeks old. But um, cooking is an art, but you don't have to be an artist to participate. So in, what I mean is that, especially this time of the year, in January and New Year, we have such great expectations and motives and shoes to fill. And we have all of this, I mean, previous two speakers have given you a book full of knowledge you can take. And again, one of the biggest aspects is when it comes back to nutrition, you know, like, what do you eat? And I will delve into that a little bit, but one thing I want to get across is you do not have to be a good cook to, you know, to learn the basics and, you know, to get by. So I think it's nice to know a little bit about the speaker first, you know, where I came from. Um, I was a fat kid. Um, I'm not going to shoot about it because uh, I would have eaten that as well. Uh, all through my teens, I was overweight. You know, every every school year, every teenage disco, every sports event, every birthday party, you know, I was a chubby kid. And I'm not saying that in a bad way. It, it very much can be a negative sense for a lot of children. But you know, I had no people around me. You know, I enjoyed my life. I enjoyed being a chubby kid. And again, I grew up on a farm. Um, but it was never brought uh, as an issue to me because I was good at sports and that kind of uh, masked the whole thing because 
you know, we're told these things like, oh, he needs a Ferrovi or oh, he's a fine, strong lad. You know, that was, that was pressed on me so much. And they kind of, these are these barriers and excuses that kind of hide the fact that, you know, I was overweight. You know, I, I needed to lose weight. Now, I wasn't crazy overweight. And there are a lot of worse cases. But at the end of the day, I was a child that, well, who was overweight? And it worked out okay, I can tell you. But um, one in four children in Ireland are overweight or obese. So like, it is an epidemic. We can't just keep masking it and putting these excuses and barriers to minds or loved ones. So um, I would delve into that. I think how, how we approach that is the most, you know, the simplest way possible is what, what, are, what is on our plates. You know, how do we approach that in a very kind of um, humane manner. So it was always rugby. Rugby was my thing in school. It was what I loved to do. And from that, I was introduced to the gym. So I started training more, and uh, I liked the uh, fact that it wasn't a team sport. You know, my efforts I put in were the rewards that I gained back. So after probably six months in the gym, I was seeing results. I was still a little, I wasn't overweight, but you know, I wasn't, uh, I wasn't in great shape by any means. So I decided I would set a goal, which a lot of us will do at this time of year. If I set a goal, I said, in six months' time, I'm going to compete here in this beautiful town of Cork. I competed in, in the NBFI. So that is me there. Um, came second, and it cares. And um, that was kind of the transition that I made. So that is when I really started looking into more of nutrition. And even at this time, I wasn't that big into cooking. You know, I like to cook, and during contest prep, you kind of have to learn how to cook. You know, you have to know what to eat, how to eat, prepping meals, all that kind of stuff. So that kind of taught me both the discipline, both the skill, and uh, it introduced me to, to cooking, and it's, it's what I love to do now. So that was my final transition into actual cooking. So I kind of left the whole health and fitness scheme because you have these men who are as highly educated as it comes. And it just didn't draw my attention as much as cooking food or as flavors or as taste. And for me, it is an art and it's something that I do love to do. So again, from there, Country Munch stems and uh, it is my current project. And it's a way for me to kind of express myself through the food that I eat, through my story. and. Um, that's kind of because of a very simple background. Now I won't spend too much time on this slide, that's all I will mention. I will kind of just go through the basics of food, and it's kind of a nice segue to finish on this, because we've heard the, the science and the details, and this is kind of the practical sense of how do I put that on my plate. So the building blocks, so we've mentioned the macronutrients, protein, carbohydrates, and fats. So this is what they look like if you put them in food perspective. So we have all our proteins, our carbs, our fats, and the message I want to get across here is the variety. I mean, you can see the first two options are chicken and rice, and I'll come back to that. But again, when we're starting off, these are the two food groups that we just, we just label as healthy. It's all we think of, you know, if I want to make a healthier change next week, chicken, broccoli, and rice, I'm going straight into it. But again, there's so many varieties, so many options, and this what is the key to a sustainable diet. It is changing your food groups, it is using you know, beef, fish, any lean meats, any eggs, dairies, lentils, protein supplements. Whether you're vegan, vegetarian, a meat eater, there are tons and tons of sources you can use. And it is using this variety of food, it is experimenting with your food. This is how you get, you know, a sustainable approach, how you enjoy your food. And it's not a chore anymore, you know, it's an enjoyable act that you can do, hopefully for the rest of your life. So again, I will delve into those kind of groups a little bit more, how you can incorporate them into your lives. But I, just, I, I stress, please, open your eyes to the food groups. There is more to life than just chicken, broccoli, and rice. And the piece there is a song, and how these things change is seasonings. And it is something, when I was introduced to it, it was like, nah, it, it was bee's knees. And I, I couldn't believe how a seasoning can change a food so much. I mean, if you have one piece of chicken, if it's seasoned with curry, cumin, turmeric, and you have another piece of seasoning with basil and regular thyme, they are two completely different foods. If you've ever traveled around the world, like regions of the world are based on the foods that they eat, based on the flavors. And I'm, I'm lucky to have traveled a lot around the world to these areas and you know, they're so passionate about their food and they're, they're proud of their heritage, they're proud of the flavors that they show. And again, it, it speaks volumes about a region and it is another essential part to the whole process is having that variety, using plenty of seasonings. Not to mention two things, they are, it's extremely cheap to buy. So any little, any Aldi, you will get them for like 39 cents. If you can go to a bigger kind of um, cash and carry, you can get them in massive bulk, which is worth like 0.3 cents per 
per piece or whatever it is. But again, they're very cheap to make and they do have some health benefits as well. Like the spicier ones will have some positive health benefits. <coughs> so your, that should say store cover essentials. Seasonings, we cover that. Oils, vinegars, and soy sauce. So I will touch on oils here because it can be a predicament. When I say oils, I mean olive oils, um, you know, extra virgin oil, rapeseed oil, grapeseed oil. There are tons and tons, and there are sprays. So these are kind of two that we weigh up a lot, and it can be one where we get a lot of hidden calories. So often when I tell people what to cook, or they come to me and say, you know, I want to cook this or this, and I give them a recipe, I'm sure anyone who's a coach here will, will find this problem in the fact that when they give someone a nutrition plan and they follow it, and the people come back and they haven't lost weight, and they ask, you know, I've eaten all the foods, I've done all the training, but I haven't dropped weight. So they say, okay, just tell me how you cook the food. I, I did a dash of oil in the pan, and uh, you know, I fried a lot of chicken. I was just curiosity, what's, what's a dash of oil? You know, maybe one, two, three, it's probably three tablespoons of oil. And I'm not trying to scare you, I'm not trying to push you know, the lower calorie option, but just if you think about it, a tablespoon of oil is 120 calories. If you cook three times a day, 360 calories. If you cook seven days a week, 250 calories a week. Something like after 2,050 calories. So there's a lot of calories that you're not even eating. It's just in the pan, it's hidden. And again, I'm not trying to scare you, but if losing weight is your goal, if you're trying to reduce your calories, things like sprays, or just being more accountable with your, your portions, with your ratios, uh, it, can be, it can make a massive, massive difference. Again, with vinegars and soy sauce, these are just two things that are so handy to have in your, in your you know, store covered essentials. For a um, similar topic, if you're making a salad dressing, it is often three portions of oil to one portion of vinegar, either balsamic or whatever vinegar you want. Again, when I say three portions, I don't mean three tablespoons, it, can just, it is just a three to one ratio. And again, soy sauce, if any Asian dishes, it is such a handy uh, ingredient to have. It can transform a dish, again, has some health benefits, and it's extremely cheap to buy. Things of tomatoes, such a handy thing to have in the house. I think 29 cents is what we can buy them for now. If you look at like Loy Grossman or any of these kind of uh, chain tomato sauces, they only go for like five euro now over the last day. And all they are is a tin of tomatoes with some seasonings, some salt, some acid, and a little bit of thyme. That's all it is, they are just reduced down. And you can actually make it at home for so much cheaper, you do not need to be spending copious amounts of money on the high level brands for the exact same thing you can create in your kitchen. You just need the know-how. And again, these are used in soups and stews and sauces. You know, variety of things you can be used in. Stock cubes, another essential thing to have in the house. And again, I don't think people realize the actual value of stock cubes. Again, we talk about stews, sauces, soups, even in rice. So if you are sticking to chicken, broccoli, and rice, please just put half a stock cube in the rice pot. It will kind of disintegrate, it will flavor your rice, it tastes much, much better, extremely low cost, minimal calories, fantastic ingredient to have. And a non-stick pan in a spatula, two things that will serve you time and time again. There is nothing worse in the kitchen than having a, a bad pan. If you've ever tried to make an omelet and it's trying to scramble the eggs, I've been there, I've uh, been through it all. A good spatula in is so important just for all kind of sauces, things like that. Invest in those good two in a piece of equipment. It would pay off tenfold. So I actually want, it. ideally I would have uh, a cooker here and I would show you, but I, I, let's just talk through it tonight. Chicken, rock, uh, rice, and broccoli. So like, these are our three staple ingredients, and the reason I'm pulling this now is because, you know, we'll see time and time again, especially on social media and all that kind of stuff, these are the things that people just revert back to when they think of healthy eating. So if I was to take these three ingredients and I would do the chicken risotto, all that changes, I take the ingredients, but I add a stock cube. So they all go into a frying pan, you add a stock cube, add some water, reduce it, maybe add some cheese, and uh, a chicken risotto is made. So a completely different dish for your three original ingredients. Let's go to Asia, teriyaki stir fry. Again, all into a frying pan, fry it off. You add some three tablespoons of soy sauce, one teaspoon of honey, a little dash of vinegar, which is probably a tablespoon, and a tablespoon of lemon juice. Again, fry it off. You have the three staple ingredients, you have a completely different dish, a completely different flavor, different for your palate. Start with some rice, it is the exact same as the one you have a bowl, but a completely different dish. And a Mexican burrito. So again, they're all fried off. You add your beans, you add your rice, 
wrap it in a wrap, put it in the oven, toast a little bit, start saying guac, and again you have this completely different dish. Now there is nothing wrong with chicken broccoli rice. I mean I've been there, I've eaten it, it is easy to cook, it is cheap, it is nutritious, but having that time and time again, the repetition in your mind, there is a little voice saying, Jesus man, I love a pizza. I miss flavor, I miss variety. So this is a great way of still sticking to your goals, not throwing in needless amounts of calories, but again, using what you have in the store. So one pan wonders, and the reason I like this is because one of the things that we just don't like is cleanup. You know, no one likes it, it's something that we try to avoid. So these are a great way of actually, you know, incorporating that into the kitchen. So stews and casseroles, again, if we talk, we have in a, in a pot, I will literally talk you through this. You have a meat, you have your seasons, you have your vegetables. You put in a stock cube, you fill it up with water, you put it on a low simmer for as long as you can, the longer the better. What you're left with is this beautiful stew, this beautiful casserole. I'm sure your mother has made a nice one in your childhood. It brings back beautiful memories. Very, very simple to make, minimal clean, and uh, can be low in calories depending on how you tailor it. Same with roasting pans, and this is a great one for meal prep as well. So again, all of these fall into the same kind of realm of easy ways to meal prep throughout the week. So on a roasting pan, you have your chicken, you have your potatoes, you can season them with whatever you want into, into an oven, and they're roasted for 30 to 40 minutes, done. You can do five dinners in the space of 40 minutes for your week. Similar with your one pot pasta, all the greens go in, it's similar, and with a quiche just for a breakfast option, you beat your eggs, you put in your onions, you put in your mushrooms, you put in your ham, you bake it on a low heat for about 20 minutes, and you have a breakfast, again, that can be portioned out for every morning of the week. So again, one pan wonders, they are a great way to spare cleanup, a great way to meal prep, and a great way just to stay accountable throughout the week while getting some variety into your diet. So some do's and don'ts. Uh, don't run before you can walk. And what I say about this is that you don't have to be a Michelin star chef to be a good cook. And again, when I started off, I wanted, I wanted to show off. I wanted to show people that you know I was good at cooking. So I would give these recipes for you know like a sous vide meat or a hollandaise sauce. And I, what I realized is that people just didn't know the basics. People couldn't cook toast or boil water. It was ridiculous. So don't run before you can walk. Learn the basics. You know, get a hold of the essentials. Fill up your kitchen with these seasonings. You know, get a slow cooker, get all the equipment first, and then progressively you can get better cooking. If it's what you like to do. If you don't like to do it, then you know, don't. It's, if it's not for you, don't. You, know, you, can, you can do the bare minimum and get away fine with it. Uh, be wise with your leftovers. And again, this is a, an epidemic I see in Ireland, is that uh, the pot of spots goes on for dinner. You know, we throw in a few more, just in case no one has enough. I think every household has a pot of spots on the stove that always has potatoes in it. You know, always. So again, be wise with your leftovers. Don't eat with your eyes. That is the main thing here. And uh, if you do have them, incorporate them into the recipes. Incorporate them into the stir fries, the stews, the casseroles. You will save money, you're saving on waste. And um, don't eat with your eyes. Uh, don't shop without a list. And again, when we're going into these Littles and Aldi's without a list, we would go in there needing milk. That's all we need, but we'll come out with a full ski outfit, a George Foreman, a toaster, and a grocery basket full of food. And again, it's great, and I know it's very hard to, to leave 50 cent worth of broccoli or 50 cent worth of potatoes, but if you don't physically, if you can't eat the throughout the week, it's going to go off. It's going to go back to point two. You're going to have leftovers. So again, please make a list, and again, with the shopping, please do not go in hungry, because that is how they get you. I mean, you walk in, and it's not by accident the bakery is by the door, and you get these wasps of the beautiful donuts. See, we had a while ago, I'm sure, I'm sure Jason is, is used to it. And uh, you have all of these hyper palatable foods at eye level, so all the chocolates, all the cereals, all these kind of stuff. So if you're going in hungry, if this is the first thing you're greeted with, straight away, temptation digs in, and your basket is filled up with these things. So you be full when you're going in, have a list, know what you need, get in and get out. And again, just be patient with it. Be creative and start simple. So like again, just touching on the first point, you don't have to be a fantastic cook to meet your nutritional goals. All you have to do is just do the simple basics of adding some seasonings, learning a new recipe, buying a slow cooker, whatever it is, it starts simple. You may love it, you may hate it, you may stick to the basics, you may progress, go to cookery school, you may stand on stage and talk to people, who knows? But um, that is it, and I'm, I think that's pretty much it. So just keep on cooking. Thank you for listening for the whole night.
wondering what's the best way to learn and where would you get all your nutrition knowledge from and yeah, what would you recommend? Yeah, that is a good question because it probably can't remember who spoke, but there's so much information out there, and I suppose you have to know what's credible and what's not. But what I did at starting off, just my own personal like, and like, own experience, is that I just studied what I liked. I mean, if I just if I like the topic of carbs, I study them. You know, if I like the topic of muscle building, I study them. If I like the topic of you know meal frequency and timing, I study that. But obviously, you have to study the right information and um, stay open minded as well as put your we get information off, you know, someone who's preached who's great information can still give bad information. Um, and yeah, be careful with your veg. Well, I, that's my own experience, just study what you like, what you really, because if you like it, you're going to absorb more and you're going to be able to learn better, really. First thing I would say is that you're actually in a, a very fortunate position because there's two things that you're going to get that most personal trainers that try to learn nutrition most. The first one is actually understanding what evidence-based information is. And obviously in first year, maybe you haven't been exposed to that whole pile, but what you'll notice over the next couple of years is that you'll essentially become an absolute expert bullshit detector, which is genuinely one of the most valuable things you can actually learn. So how to actually detect information that is simply not true, because it's not evidence-based, and you'll actually learn that through your college experience. So I wouldn't be discouraged by that. And the other thing is that you're gonna get a fundamental understanding of things like biochemistry, human physiology, organic chemistry, things like that. Those like fundamental subjects that, if you understand them, like they're very boring and bland now, but it'll actually make your nutrition learning in the future so much easier. And that's something I've done myself in the past probably six to 12 months, is try to scale things back and just spending time studying the bones of organic chemistry, which is so boring and so detached from the things that we talk about, but it's also very, very useful, but it just might take years to actually be very useful. And the last thing I would say, I was gonna say, oh yeah, write down a list of questions, okay? So write down a list of questions that you yourself don't know now and that you would like to be able to answer so that if I was to ask you, you'd be able to give me the perfect explanation with all the context discussed. And then what you can do over the next couple of months or years is actually explore all of those questions. That for me has been one of the most amazing ways of learning. And also actually write those answers down. So don't just ask them and think, oh well, yeah, I know the answer. Write them down in a book, keep that book, and write out answers. Because one of the things that has been lost as of recent is actually writing. People aren't actually able to put things on paper, and this is why you see a lot of things on social media where people give very brief answers to questions because they're not able to discuss them fully. But if you can actually write two or three pages on a question that you've been asked, you can be sure that that is a very, very useful knowledge that will stand the test of time. Uh, I, regret, I regret sitting here. <laughs> um, for me, Experiencing it and I suppose practicing practicing it is, is a big thing. And I don't and I don't mean that in the sense of you should be going trying every fat diet, but the fact that I've experienced all of them, the fact that I've tried some of them and I know that okay, this doesn't work, okay, this is just ridiculous, and no one can live off this. And the best way to learn something is to go through it and to experience it. And then I suppose all of these things are kind of subjective to the person as well. So every individual is different, every individual will learn something a different way. For me personally, it has been as true, okay, I'm gonna try this, it works, if it doesn't. Again, I do base a lot of myself off science-backed research, and again, if it, if it sounds ridiculous, it usually is. Um, but I don't think anything can be better than actually going through it, actually feeling the physical results, seeing what happens, and again, you come out the other side, you know exactly what to do, what not to do, and how to advise someone on whether to do or not to do it, personally. <laughs> yeah, I can agree with him. I think from go through myself is when I learned the most about nutrition. I think what suits yourself and what you can maintain is the most important thing. Like doing something that you think that you won't be able to stick with for longer than like six weeks is not really um, good to like keep seeing your results because if you're not going to be able to maintain it, it's not really like good to keep doing. doing. You're sitting there right now and you have never set foot in the gym. What advice, very briefly, would you give to someone just to start with me? I actually got asked the exact same question earlier. Did you, did you care? Um, I said this, I'll say the same thing. Um, do what you enjoy first. Obviously, you have to do what works and um, find an approach you enjoy because I go back to the point I made in the presentation is that it is a hobby. You can get obsessed with it easily. If you're taking a practical decision, it's better lifestyle. 
you should enjoy it, you should not be a task, you should fit in easy with your lifestyle, you should have longevity, you should be sustainable, and you know, it should not be that the better is better, and it is compared back to that, we're lucky to be in the position, so you should enjoy it, but don't let that derive from the hard work either. I would say like, start where you actually are. So take the next step in the ladder as opposed to like trying to climb all the way up at once. Okay, so if you if you currently train zero days per week, then training one day per week is an insane increase in the stimulus to your body. So why not start with one day per week? Like no one will ever do that. I don't even expect you to do that because it's actually too boring. But even two or three sessions a week is a good place for people to start. And start with the basics and see what you can actually do well. You know learn how to do a bodyweight squat. Like don't try and get under your body weight under a bar if you, you can't even do it without load. And just learn those exercises. Take your time and just start where you are. Go ahead. And I think a big thing that that is, you don't have to go to the gym to exercise. I think a lot of people are kind of pressurized or they just think that to get in great shape or you know to be active, to be healthy, you have to go to the gym, you have to squat, you have to follow these programs. But in reality there are thousands of exercises you can do. I know people who absolutely love to run, who love to swim, who love to cycle, who never set foot in the gym and are twice as healthy as any other kind of individual that is. And even I myself, going back to you know experiencing and practicing, last year, I mean, I, I knew I had lost the love for the gym, or it just, it just wasn't there anymore. I was going through the motions. I wasn't actually training. So I decided just to take something new. So I started doing running, and I did two triathlons, it was a great experience, it was a great change of stimulus. Now, when I'm back to weightlifting, I haven't loved it as much ever since. I mean, I absolutely love training again, but that, that break for a while, it's like anything else, when you go back to it, you love it twice as much. But um, get out there and experience as much as you can. If it's dancing, if it's whatever it is, gymnastics, there are tons to do, and it's, it opens up so much more disciplines and things that you didn't know about yourself um, in that broad kind of sense of scheme. So it doesn't have to be the gym, the exercise. Yeah, like don't do something like straight away for six weeks, don't cut out like everything. Don't if you have like ten glasses of go, bring it down to like start off bring it down to six, keep dropping it down each week, cut out small things. Don't just go out say, I'm gonna go to gym five this week, I'm gonna cut out everything, I'm not gonna eat take away, I'm just gonna eat clean. Because after that six weeks you'll say it's done now and then you'll end up like binging or going back doing everything and the weight will come back on again. So just try to see like what you can stick to, what fits your little lifestyle, just start cutting out things gradually and you'll see your results then and that will keep you motivated to keep going and just keep progressing each week and that's it really. Has anyone else got any questions guys? Perfect, that sounds good. Well, you know, <laughs> <laughs> you've been great. I guess um, we should say goodbye to the guys now but because um, I have one more guest coming up on stage and then we leave her. And do you want to say anything else guys? Are you sure you want to make one more question? Can I ask another question? <laughs> no, yeah, we need to get a sign guys. I don't know what to say. Yeah.